welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. I am Wazbir Hussain. Battle lines are drawn in Meghalaya over the attempt by the Kasi Hills Autonomous District Council to pass the Kasi Lineage Bill that actually threatens to clip or debar Kasi women of their traditional rights if they marry non kasis the architect of the move, Mr. H. S. Silla, the vocal chief executive member of the Kasi Hills Autonomous District Council, is, a, is on our show tonight and would obviously defend the bill. What has shocked many and has drawn their ire was a purported remark by Mr. Shilla that this bill, when enacted and enforced, will prevent the spread of HIV AIDS, giving an impression that the disease or the virus is spread when locals come in physical contact with non kasis now, Mr. Silla has the support of the Garo and Gentia Autonomous District Councils because they have also come out to back the Kasselinius bill. While many are questioning the right of the political administrative body to clamp restrictions on a woman's choice of a partner for marriage, others are questioning as to how a Kasi woman would lose her rights as a tribal if she were to marry a non Kasi, and is this also going to apply to a Kasi woman marrying, for example, a Garo or a Gentia? To discuss this rather sensitive issue, I am joined from Shillong by Mr. H. S. Silla himself, CEM of the Kasi Hills Autonomous District Council and a senior leader of the ruling National People's Party. I also have in Shillong well-known social activist, Ms. Hasina Karbi. I am also joined by Mr. John Karsing, President of the Grand Council of Chiefs and Robert Karjarin, President of the Hunitrap Youth Council. At our studios in Guwahati, I have well-known writer and social commentator, Mr. Dhruva Hajarika, and Dr. Gitanjali Ghosh, assistant professor at the National Law University and Judicial Academy, Assam, who, among other issues, takes a keen interest in tribal customary laws. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this program. Why is the controversy? Why are people opposed to this? I will begin by asking Mr. H. S. Silla, the chief executive member of the Kasi Hills Autonomous District Council. Mr. Silla, welcome. Why is the controversy? Why are people opposed to this law? Do you think you have made a grave mistake somewhere? There is no controversy at all. Only a handful of people are opposing it when the entire population, Kasi population, including Kasi and Jaintia, they support this bill. Okay. How can you set uh, controversy on the a handful of people? There are some non kasi who raise an objection about this bill also. Okay. How can you include them in that group? And those uh, people who oppose also are, who are already uh, married to a non-tribal, non kasi from among the Kasi population, they I all vehemently supported this bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now, Mr. Shilla, one of the reasons you said this bill will help prevent contracting of HIV AIDS by Kasi women. Now, this is an extremely, you know, unacceptable remark because you are casting aspersions on the local people, isn't it? As well as you are giving an impression as if all non Kasis are carrying of this disease. That is an impression. That is not my view. That is an impression that is being generated. How would you like to respond? What I said is different from what you asked me the question. I have just mentioned that uh, to one of, to one, to some extent, to some extent in, in 27 of last month, it came out in Maufor, that is in Kasi Delhi on the 27th of last month. So I just mentioned that this, uh, uh, because a lot of um, uh, this, uh, what do you call, this um, sexual uh, practice between our people and the uh, um, people coming from outside the state, like the migrants and truckers. So I just said that this will to some extent because it ha happened, it happened. I could see with my own eyes in Latsmith, a large quantity of condom had been distributed to the truckers. So what does it mean? 
No, that is a different issue. Are you are you questioning? Because there are a lot of anti apes programs going on. A lot of materials are being distributed to people. That's a different issue. But are you questioning the morality of the local women? Uh, is this what you were suggesting? Some people are very upset with your comment, uh, Mr. Silla. I'm not seeing that. I am only seeing that. Uh, the part of this bill, part of it, I mean, after we have brought this into operation, so this rampant, rampant uh, unsafe sex between our people and then uh, truckers and others will, to some extent, will be checked. Okay, but so you therefore stick to your command that this bill is also going to prevent the spread of HIV AIDS. Uh, I mean, is, that is, is, do you stick to your command? You see, let me quote, on the 25th of February 2012, it was the Meghalaya AIDS Control Society that who has issued a statement in the outlook that migrants, truckers and factory workers constitute a high risk group. And then when uh, we heard that the parliament itself on the 3rd of August 2018 that Meghalaya is one of the three states which is a uh, HIV hotspot. So it is our duty to, to warn our people. Okay, okay, Mr. Silla, stay on with us. We'll go to our full panel now. Uh, I would like to go to Hasina Karbi in Shillong. Uh, Hasina, you have heard the chief executive member of the Kasi Hills Autonomous District Council, Mr. H.S. Silla, uh, uh, saying that there is no controversy at all. A handful of people are opposed to this bill. Uh, he is also sticking basically to his point that this will help uh, the spread of, this will check or reduce the spread of HIV AIDS. These are the two points. He said that only a handful of people are opposed to this bill and he continues to think that this bill is actually going to help in checking or preventing the spread of HIV AIDS. Your opening remarks, Hasina Karbi. Uh, was beer with due respect to Bachala, I think uh, when he said that the bill is also going to help in preventing HIV and AIDS, I would like to really tell him that the most important part is that he cannot stigmatize any statement. No bill can actually bring in stigmatization further about the spread of HIV and AIDS. HIV and AIDS is something that it's preventable and it's got nothing to do with a bill. And secondly is, I would really like with due respect, that how can a bill stop a prevention on HIV AIDS? How can he say that women who are marrying outside, you know, the Kasi community are actually bringing HIV and AIDS? That is, that is something which is very stigmatized okay. in, to HIV and AIDS, okay. which is now, also something now, that people living with HIV right. and AIDS has a right. You cannot bring we'll, that aspect at all. Right. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to the broader issue. John Karsing, uh, I, will, I, will, I will go to uh, Robert Karzarin as well. But Mr. John Karsing, what is the, the core of the bill? The core issue that Mr. Silla and the Khasi Hills Autonomous District Council says that, you know, uh, the Khasi women should not be allowed to marry non khasis because this is affecting the Khasi society. There are a lot of non, non khasis are taking benefit of the tribal status and so on. That is the core argument of the Khasi Hills Autonomous District Council and its main mover, Mr. Silla. How do you respond? What do you think? Uh, at outset, Wasbir, uh, thank you for getting me on the show. Uh, my reaction to this, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, my reaction was already already taken was taken quite some time ago, wherein uh, I had uh, we had uh, made a suggestion. Yeah. That uh, one is you don't make a, you don't legislate out of fear. And number two is uh, when we make these, uh, uh, when we are thinking, you know, th on one hand, uh, the idea of protect protecting the tribes, 
the minuscule uh, tribes is very important. While it's very important to take measures to protect the identity of the tribes, uh, we had uh, requested the DC Council when they legislated this bill, uh, wanting to know whether, you know, on what basis did they arrive at this conclusion. At this conclusion. Uh, so it, would have to be, it would have to be on the basis of some statistics, some inputs, you know, credible inputs, credible information. And have we also explored other mechanisms, yeah. which is already there in the in the original bill? So primarily, original bill. Uh, I mean, the original act, the 1997, uh, then assented to by the governor in 2005, the Khasi Social Custom Lineage uh, Act, 2005 already caters to these issues and uh, I was also taken aback because uh, there was a notification yeah. by the district council uh, during the I think the tenure of Bashallah himself which empowered the Senkasi Senkme central body the Senkasi Senkme is a is a yeah a, a body here in uh, Khasi Hills which uh, looks you know which uh, I uh, think so they were empowered to advise the DC Council on customary uh, laws and uh, customary practices. Yeah. Uh, no. I was quite taken aback when I found that uh, they were not consulted. Or, they were and not consulted. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll come so, back to you. Rob. Uh, what I'm trying to John say is... John Harsing, I'll come back to you. You have made the point that even the so, initiators of the earlier bill were not consulted. The stakeholders were not consulted. And that brings the question for a wider consultation perhaps before this bill was pushed into the in the district council. I'll come back to both of you, Hasina and John Harsing. Let me quickly go to Robert Kar Karzaring before I come to my panelists in the studio. I just want to... Uh, uh, Mr. Robert, Ka I hold on. I just hold want to say also, uh, was we. I just want. Uh, hold on with your thoughts, John Karsing. Uh, Mr. Robert Karjarin, the president of the Unitrep Youth Council. Uh, Mr. Karjarin, many people are supporting the bill, but there are many who are also opposed to it. Isn't the bill against a woman's freedom, uh, you know, to choose her life partner? It's a simple question. Mr. Robert Karjarin. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, I would like to clarify that, uh, of course, you are right that uh, many uh, Khasi people supporting the bill, but uh, only few people who are uh, opposing the bill. Uh, I think one thing you should uh, there's, there's one issue that we have to make uh, ourselves very clear is that uh, the Khasi Hill Autonomous Council, or in short KHADC, does not uh, make any law with regard as to whom you should marry, or does not restrain any person as to whom you should, uh, you should marry. The, uh, the very objective or the legislative intent with regard to this uh, uh, Second Amendment Bill is to define yeah. who is a Khasi. Which means we, we try to define who is ourselves as a community as a whole. So in the process of defining who is a Khasi, yeah. this, uh, right. new pro, this new provision of the bill right. is merely an extension of uh, Section 3 uh, Section 3B okay. of the uh, previous okay. uh, Act, the, the uh, of the previous uh, 1997 Act, because uh, if you read the previous Act, you you will see that uh, an offspring of a, of a, of any mixed marriage between a Khasi and a non Khasi, if uh, he or she could no longer could no longer speak Khasi, or yeah. he or she could. Uh, has yes. uh, has did not follow the Khasi matrilineal system of language, or if he or she, no, no that the thing, no, or he or she has uh, has adopt any any personal law of that community. Okay, 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 Robert, hold on with your thoughts. I'll come back to you, Mr. Drubo Hajarika. You know what do you make of this? An attempt by an autonomous district council to impose to come up with a bill, come up with an enact a law. I mean that will restrict. 
a local woman, Khasi woman in this case, from marrying non Khasi, saying that, oh, your tribal status will be debarred. You will, will not recognize you as a tribal. You cannot enjoy your privileges and rights. That will include property as it is a matrilineal society. You may not be able to use, your children may not be able to use the surnames, so on and so forth. So, as a, someone you know, uh, who is closely observing the society in the Northeast, what are your immediate thoughts? Was we uh, see? I have uh, this is a personal note. I have always been a Democrat and always believed in free thinking and uh, to a good extent free living, provided yeah. it is within the permissibility of the laws and mores of each society. Society. I grew up in Shillong. I spent my first 30 years there, and I'm I'm very close with some of my Khasi friends, families. Uh, in fact, half my heart is there. Your debut novel was set in uh, Ceylon? Yes, it uh, was set For, in for the benefit of those who don't know. <coughs> yes. So what I feel is this, you see, the institution of marriage is a very sacred institution. Mm -hmm. By virtue of that, uh, it also has its own liberty, the democratic element in it. So I feel that when marriage, marriage is involved, like when we say someone falls in love, for example, it, there should not be any bar in it. Once there is a bar, some element of humanity is lost. That is one aspect of my observation, understanding and perception of this issue, although it is very minimal because I have yet to go into the finer details of the mm -hmm. law and the act. Okay. The other aspect I feel, if I can just finish off this, is that the identity portion. Uh, you know, there was one point I remember when uh, there was the population policy of India uh, which just sought to be enacted. And there, one of my friends said that when it comes to the smaller groups, there is always a, uh, there is always a fear that the lesser the population, even yeah. in terms of offspring, mm -hmm. the lesser will be the e effect on the overall Absolutely. understanding. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. And hence, I feel that at some level, uh, well, in, uh, in fact, this is a very peculiar uh, thing to fall upon, but uh, the uh, uh, Khasi ladies, Marrying a non Khasi by virtue of that marriage itself uh, ought not to lose her identity as a Khasi lady, as a Siddhul tribe within the constitution of India and as given by the Sikh schedule. The other implications which are uh, subject to debate requires time, acceptability, because in the long run, one law can change the entire... Absolutely. We, 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 we will, will expand this debate. Uh, thank you for your opening remarks. Uh, Dr. Gitanjali Ghosh, uh, you know, uh, Gitanjali, uh, you see, you your thesis, your subject of research has been uh, the property rights of the Khasi women. Uh, uh, you teach at the National Law University and Judicial Academy. So my question to you, how does such kind of a law that seeks to prevent a Khasi woman or any woman from marrying the partner of our choice uh, and, and saying that, oh, you will lose your Khasi tribal status, you will lose all your rights to property, you may even not allow, uh, be able to provide uh, your children your surname, which is the, normally the case in the matrilineal Khasi society. So how does this stand this judicial scrutiny? Um. Good evening, everybody. Robert, if you're hearing me, I'm really happy to see you after so long. We studied together. Um, carrying off from where Robert left, where he said that the law doesn't purport to stop anybody from marrying whoever they want to. It only purports to make sure that once you marry somebody who is not a khasi, you lose your khasi status. Now, the point about marriage is, apart from getting the companionship of a person for life, there are a lot of rights which follow from the natural corollary of marriage. And one of them is property rights. Mm -hmm. I have had an intercaste marriage. And if I am said that I'm not a Bengali anymore because I happen to marry outside my caste, that would probably be an affront of, on my identity. Now, coming to the test of a judicial review, if we look at the Constitution of India and if we look at the fundamental rights, the right to equality as enshrined under Article 14 is the essence of the Constitution. And any law which purports to discriminate amongst women on the basis of their marital status, I do not think that would stand the test of judicial scrutiny. Over and above that, as Robert spoke about the Khasi Lineage Act that first came in 1997, I feel there were enough safeguards in that act to protect against okay. what would happen if a Khasi woman got married to a non-Khasi man. 
So, so Gitanjali, basically, I'll come back to you for expand. To I'll ask you to expand on this. So, basically, the point which Gitanjali Ghosh has made is that this does not stand the uh, 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 the the test of the judiciary. Even if the bill is passed, if somebody challenges it, this may well be struck down. Is that what you were saying? In short, yes. Uh, yes. Now, now we'll expand on that, uh, Mr. Shilla. I'll have to go for a break, but before that, Mr. Shilla. Now you have heard. Uh, now you know, Governor. Now. Before I come to the governor, you know, status of the bill, what has been the response of the state government? Because you belong to the NPP, Mr. Shilla, and the state government is also led, led by the NPP. The chief minister belongs to the NPP. What has been the response of the state government? What is the present status of the bill? You see, after we... <clears throat> Because we brought this bill on the 25th of uh, July, 25th of July, it was, uh, it was um, on the 25th of July, it was the first day of the session, of the summer session. Yeah. So, uh, at the time when we brought this bill, uh, I have not been told about that uh, there was a first amendment that had already been moved the first amendment bill of 2015. So this became the second amendment. And the mistake was not the second amendment, it was we have called it back from the government because the first amendment, this was a mistake in that bill. They right. have included this what we call the Rangbakur. So those uh, previous extip committee, they yeah. want to amend the Kasi Lineage uh, Social Custom Act 1997 so as to include in that act itself mm -hmm. the uh, how to appoint a Rambakur and his, his power, yes. which is not correct. So yes. we have to recall the bill to make this correction. As the second amendment, second amendment is second okay. Uh, amendment. John, yes, okay. yes, Mr. Shilla, hold on, I'll come back to you. John, you were trying to say something, John Karsing. Yes, John, you were trying to say, make a point. Uh, yes, I was trying. Yeah, I was trying to see that, uh, you know, uh, one is to correct one of your one. To correct one of your opening statements earlier that the uh, I'm seeing newspaper reports that the Jainte Hills District Council has not committed itself to this idea. So going by that, I would like to just uh, read out a short one. The Slong, uh, you know, these are the clans. In Khasi Hills, we have the Kur. Then you have the sub-clan with his uh, judge. And then you have the f separate families, you know. Which yeah, they make say your point. What, I, what, is, it, have the nucleus, what is it that, that the, you're trying the to... The Ying family. Please, please make so your my point. point is, my point is, yeah, the, the sub-clans, Slong, Shilan, in fact, they are one clan. They are, they, are, they are bonded by blood relations. So the laws on that bill were that if somebody were to even marry somebody of a Jainte Hills, when that giant, uh, when the act, uh, bill would act would be... So even that will be regarded as, as non-Kasi. I get your point. The Kasi Hills District Council. So that would have been read as non-Kasi. So there were flaws and I'm very thankful to the uh, you know, government and the governor and also the district council, Bashala has also the executive committee, they have uh, recalled the bill. And okay. I'm, uh, okay. I'm happy that I've, they have I got uh, your point. You've made putting yes, up a consultative you've committee. Made, how can a sub clan, so, you are saying that these are sub clans, and how can that be regarded as non Kasi? Hasina, I'll go for a break, but before that, uh, what do you think at the end of the day? Because uh, you have not made the broad point uh, that how can a Kasi woman lose her tribal status just because she marries a non Kasi? Hasina. As a woman who is a Kasi myself, I would want to say that traditionally, the traditional, I mean Kasi, if a woman marries within the community or within a, you know, your own tribe or outside, the lineage is through the 
mother. So it's very, very critical and very, very important that that needs to be understood. Now, how can that be taken away one fine day through one bill that came in, I mean, that is wanting to come into existence? I will definitely, on behalf of many, many women who also go by this thinking, that it cannot be so. And the other part was B, which is very critical, is that if this bill is trying to say that if a woman, a Kasi woman, marries someone outside who is a non Kasi, she will not be called a Kasi anymore, then my question to Mr. Shalla is what should she be called? What will she be? I mean, if she's not a Kasi anymore, will that answer be justified in that bill? I don't think so. Absolutely. That answer is not there. Lot so of one is trying to change the traditional practice. Absolutely. One is trying to change the traditional practice. A lot of questions need answers. A lot of questions have to be answered by the Khasi Hills Autonomous District Council and all those who are supporting the bill. We'll come to that. After all, at the end of the day, a lot of, lot of, a lot of uh, broader uh, negotiations and broader discussions perhaps are necessary and whether this bill is going to stand the scrutiny of the judicial process. We'll wait for an answer and we'll wait and see. On this note, we we'll go for a short breaks down don't go away we'll be right back Welcome back, uh, Robert Karjarin. This is 21st century, isn't it? Why should there be restrictions? Why should there be restraint? How can anybody restrain someone from marrying anyone they like? Mr. Robert Karjarin. Uh, uh, I think Mr. Hussein, this, as, as, I, as I say earlier that the Kasi Hill Automotive Council did not restrain a Kasi women to marry anybody. They still have uh, they have uh, every right to marry any person, but while uh, marrying any person, if they uh, marrying a person outside the community, they will be no longer treat, uh, considered as a Kasi, neither uh, her her offspring. So it's it will be very wrong to say that uh, the bill try to restrain somebody else to to marry with somebody else. You you see, there's one thing you must be very clear. Why did, uh, why did we as an organization also support this bill? You see, like uh, Mechlia as a state and KHDC has already have many law in, uh, in, in attempt to protect the interests and the rights of the tribal people in, uh, in this region. We have like the Mechlia Land Transfer Act, but which bar uh, non-tribal non to buy land in the state. Then we have the Trading uh, by Non-Tribal Act, which bar non-tribal to do trade within the district of uh, KHADC, JHADC, and even GHADC. Okay, but this this bill has a flaw in it, and and, and the flaw is that the moment the moment and, and the flaw is that through the institution of marriage. So if we don't stop this uh, institution of marriage. If we do not, if, if we still consider this, this bill will have a flaw. Okay, okay. Uh, Hasina, if you can hear, if you have heard uh, Robert Karjarin, he says that bill does not restrain Kasi women from marrying anyone they like, but if only that it says that if they marry their offsprings, will not be regarded as Kasis. Uh, I mean, it amounts to the same thing, isn't it? The restrictions. Yeah, the restriction amounts back to the same thing because it restricts the choices of marriage. They ca there's, I mean, traditionally the customs, Kasi custom, has never had that restricted situation all through generation. So this bill is bringing a new dimension. It's like changing the whole cultural context of how Khasi as a, you know, as a tribe has been in existence. So I don't think, you know, if they say it's the offspring, it's still the same. It's about choices back here. Right. Uh, when the lineage we have a, is still through the woman. Yeah, we, so how do you change that? How do you change that? Uh, we have a legal expert in our panel. I will come to her. But, uh, but uh, you know, John, uh, do you think uh, this bill will end up in court? Because do you think that will be the only option left now that the Khasi Hills Autonomous District Council is banned 
on pushing and do you think the ball lies before the court it is the governor uh, who has to take a call on this do you think it is violative of the constitution john carsing uh, you know yeah today uh, you know um, i just got information today that one of the major clans uh, one of the major clans uh, having about 7 to 11 sub clans have submitted a letter to honorable uh, uh, cm requesting for 6 months time so that they can in turn discuss with their stakeholders on this subject matter that is one number two is uh, I, I would imagine that on a matter like this, uh, there is no ruling, opposing, and things like that. We all have the interests of our people at heart. And basically what we want to do is bring, you know, bill which will have a positive impact. A law should have positive impact. So, uh, you see, you know, uh, Wasbir, in the beginning you asked me what is the core issue. The core issue is I think the flaws in the very the sixth schedule itself. Let me tell you something which will uh, shock all of you. Uh, our late uh, Reverend Nichols Roy, who is considered the architect of the sixth schedule, himself had to go through this scrutiny, where uh, during one of his uh, uh, contests for election, there was a case against him questioning his uh, uh, schedule tribe status. And uh, Supreme Court had dealt with that. So I would like to say even earlier in 1973, uh, there yeah. was a commission constituted, a three-member co commission. Yeah. And they also dwelt at length. Of course, that was on land reforms, but it also touched on the lineage issue. Okay. So also what I'm saying is, yes, you can we, we, we can make law on uh, depriving privileges and things like that. But I think on lineage, because the Khasi's system, custom is based on lineage from the mother. If you disturb that, if you disturb that, Khasi society will, Khasi society will crumble. Will crumble. So, uh, so absolutely uh, important point there. Hold on, John. You are saying you are making a very important point. Uh, Yes, law can be made, but in the case of the Khatis, Khasis, since the lineage is, comes through the mother, if any attempt is made to change that, the Khasi society itself has faces the threat of getting crumbled. Uh, uh, Gitanjali goes, you know, is there any precedence anywhere of any attempt? What are the what are the you know protection uh, that our constitution and the law provides uh, for people who may face? Now, suppose this act really comes into force. Assuming, then what are the legal recourse available to the Khasi women, or particularly only those Khasi women, of course, who wants to sort of go against this, if at all? Okay. Now, Just, anyway, let me let me clarify to the viewers that we are we are not opposed to this bill or we are not supporting the bill. We are discussing it in an academic interest. That is the only interest of the channel. Yes, uh, the academic point. Uh, yes, uh, Gitanjali. Um, so I would like to answer your question in two parts. Um, to begin with, uh, the Khasis are a matrilineal society and they are one of the very few matrilineal societies still surviving, not just in India but the entire world. Now, if we look into the Khasi Lineage Act of 1997, you will find that the Khasis have also found a way to keep on this matrilineal society living on even when a Khasi man ends up marrying a non-Khasi woman in the sense that there is a ceremony called Tangjait following which a clan is created by suffixing the Khar to the title of the man that this lady has gotten married to and that is why we have titles like Khar Lingdo, Khar Buli, Khar Kongor, etc. Now having said that, coming back to your question clearly, Assuming but not conceding that this bill does pass and gets the governor's assent and becomes a law. And if there is a Khasi woman who is not happy with it, she can definitely file a writ petition because this is a direct affront on her fundamental right to equality. Because what this bill purports to do is discriminate between women on the basis of their marital status and then not just that, take away their very identity. Let me at this point uh, take you to some Supreme Court as well as High Court judgments where questions came in where either uh, scheduled tribe women got married to uh, forward caste men or forward caste women got married to scheduled tribe 
yeah. uh, men. Now, in this case, what happened is when ST women got married to forward caste men, sometimes when they applied for jobs and wanted to enjoy the ST status, it was said that, oh, now that you are married to an upward caste man, you are now upward. But the Supreme Court decided that no. You are not married into a caste or a tribe, you are born no, into it. Born into it. Similarly, mm -hmm. when upper caste women married people belonging to scheduled caste or scheduled tribes and they tried to <coughs> take the benefit of being an SC or an ST, then again the Supreme Court said that because you were born into an upper caste, you remain that. And as far as children of these unions are concerned, it yeah. depends on how they have been brought up, whether as a member of a forward caste Absolutely. or so a scheduled tribe. There are, there are very clear-cut uh, guidelines, clear-cut judgments and directives by the courts on this. We, it's a very interesting, we are poised at a very interesting stage of the debate. We'll continue and uh, ask uh, Gitanjali to elaborate. Dhruba Hajarika, I'm coming to Hasina and John and of course Mr. Silla and Robert. Uh, uh, um, uh, Dhruba Hajarika, you know, uh, the boss well, as a first step, judiciary is a second step. Now the bill has not yet been passed. So the ball really lies in the court of the, uh, you know, governor, isn't it? Uh, in the ball lies with the governor, but who is the custodian of the constitution? That's true. That's true. Uh, the, you see, we are fortunate to be to have the kind of constitution that we have in India, and uh, everything flows from the constitution. The, His Excellency the Governor is the custodian, uh, even regarding certain interpretations. But then, <clears throat> inevitably, in the North, North East, uh, especially from the little judicial knowledge that I have, it's, there is always a subtle clash between customary laws, we can sometimes call it tribal laws too, and the laws that prevail in our IPC, CRPC, or the Evidence Act, and in, in the plethora of other acts. So on that score, this conflict is perhaps inevitable. What is necessary is to draw the best. I think one of the panelists, I think Mr. John, he said that we should bring out something that is positive by virtue of law. Any law that brings in some, some kind of negativity is bad in, bad in spirit. Absolutely. So that is the basic That the is basic, the basic, basic trust. The law has to be positive, come up with a positive impact on society. Mr. H.S. Silla, I'll come to you, Hasina and John. Mr. Silla, the governor, uh, there are reports that the governor has returned the bill without any comments. Uh, what do you have to say? Or is it something technical? Uh, Mr. Shilla. It is not that the government return, it is that we, from the executive committee, we have asked the government uh, to, uh, to the governor, to the government to return the bill. Okay, you decided to recall the bill. Uh, Mr. Silla, you know, now, of course, the Garo Hills Council and Gentia Hills Council are also said to be, uh, supposed to be toying with the similar idea. Of course, the Garo Hills Council has come up with this idea uh, uh, quite some time back. What does this mean? Does this mean that uh, your idea actually has a lot of support even uh, in other parts of Meghalaya, not just the Kasi, Kasi Hills? Mr. Silla. Uh, Garo Hills uh, Autonomous Justice Council, they have already passed the bill restricting both men and women to marry uh, non-tribal. And then they have sent it to the governor, through the government, and it was the then Chief Minister, Dr. Mukul Sangma, at his level only, he sent it back to Garo Hills. So now they have, the Garo Hills have to send it back to the government, uh, to the governor, through the government. Okay. We have gone ahead of us, Gore Hills District Council. Gone ahead. And Giant Hills is on the process to uh, bring such a similar bill in the Giant Hills District Council. Right. Uh John Carsing, John Carsing, you know, uh, I'm asking the same question to I, both of you, John Carsing and Hasina Karbi. Uh, you know, what is the mood among the civil society? Uh, is there a common agreement that the governor has to play a very big role? What do you think should be the role of the state government? Uh, so far, we have been hearing that Mr. Conrad Sangma saying, okay, this is the Autonomous District Council. We, doesn't, we don't have much to say in their affairs. That is the stand of Chief Minister uh, uh, Conrad Sangma. Uh, so now, what do you have to say, role of the governor and the role of the state government? First, John Kassing. Uh As I mentioned, I think the role of the governor is uh, 
which we understand uh, has referred back the bill to the government and subsequently the city council also re uh, recalled the bill yeah uh, the role of the governor is to ensure that uh, uh, his uh, his uh, his role in the sixth schedule uh, and and if you look at a sixth schedule what was the primary objective of the sixth schedule was to one of their work was to codify the customs uh, they don't make new customs. They're supposed to codify the customs and practices, right? Yeah. So that is one process which is ongoing and uh, sadly very slow. Uh, we have around more over th over three thousand clans and sub clans. Three thousand. Now, now you see w what I've been trying to impress upon the authorities in the district council is please get the stakeholders on board. So, so now the various yeah. clans have uh, started writing to DC Council saying that we want some time because I'm not, I'm not sure if uh, DC Council has the authority to enforce some custom over the clans. So each clan would have his own uh, views and things. So we had uh, suggested unless you get the views of the clans to come out on this uh, on this bill in a very hasty manner would be uh, you know disastrous to Kasi society itself and i'm glad that they have you know recalled the bill and now they have uh, you know they are contemplating on a further wider consultation yeah so uh, role of a governor is to ensure that customs are codified and there have been Customs various uh, high court rulings to be codified in relation to various uh, so, issues in many of our so, yeah so, so Hasina, what about the state government saying that this is a district autonomous district council, so we don't have much to say? Uh, we, how, how, uh, you know, are you convinced with this argument? Does it hold? I think the most important part for a state government is to look that there is a procedure which takes in consideration constitutional rights of the country rather than just saying that they have no role to play then rather than saying that this is just KHADC that has to take you know the entire process on its own so it's very important that state government it's not that they should interfere into the bill but playing a role to facilitate the processes that takes into consideration constitutional rights of the country. That's what something that the role of the state should be. The other part is that when we are talking about what uh, John have just mentioned right now, I mean uh, the h historical factor of the matrilineal society that is the Kasi, which is the, you know, the, the I mean the most uh, smallest, you know, in around the world today has been having a very beautiful cultural practices that gives you know, gender equality worldwide. Many studies from around the world, they have come to try to understand that the, the kind of gender equality being practiced in the Khasi uh, tribe is very unique. But this bill is trying to push that away and trying to take the right of a woman. So this is also very contradicting, you know, in some way. How can the right of woman be taken away? Absolutely. So I think they have to consider uh, that. Right. The Gita other factors, what has been mentioned, the stakeholders. Yeah. The stakeholders are very important. But here, I think the Senkhasi, the clans, if they don't come together to give their feedback, how can somebody overnight, you know, from KHADC decide to change everything that has been practiced over the absolutely, years? Absolutely, absolutely. That is just something uh, yeah, that is hold not on. accepted. Yes, yes, a very valid point, Gitanjali. How do you, uh, uh, wh how do you add, how do you respond? <coughs> To what Hasina said, gender equality. It's a front on gender equality. Um, as uh, Hasina ma'am has rightly pointed out, um, there is, I wouldn't say that the Khasi society is absolutely um, perfect when it comes to gender equality because that is probably utopian in this day and age. But of course, it comes really, really close <coughs> to it. Now, adding to what uh, Hasina ma'am has had to say, um, I would like to take the discussion a little, yeah. you know, away from what we have been doing. One of the primary issues in the Khasi society has been the fact that sons do not have any rights to property. And therefore, this entire logic that when Khasi women marry non-Khasi men, then the property ends up going to the men. Well, technically, that is not possible because the property remains in the na name of the woman. Now, having said that, in the 1960s itself, this men's right movement had started, which started talking about giving sons 
equal rights in the property as girls got. And then in 1984, the Meghalaya Self Acquired Property Act came into the picture, which said that parents were free to give their property to whoever they wanted, be it a son or a girl. But now, as far as ancestral property is concerned, there is where the Khasi custom still applies, where the property just doesn't go to daughters. It actually goes to the youngest daughters. But what many people forget is that this youngest daughter is not the sole owner of the property. She is a mere custodian who has to consult not just her brothers and sisters, but also her maternal uncle maternal with regard to uncles. what is supposed to be done. But at this point, I would like to clarify something about the Khasi society that yes, the Khasi society is a matrilineal society, but it is not a matriarchal society in the sense of the okay, fact that it's, it is a matrilineal society, but not a matriarchal, matriarchal society. society. Uh, so these are all legalese. Uh, we have to understand that a nuanced uh, uh, definition. And I'll come to Gitanjali to to explain in a simpler term what this difference means. But uh, but let me quickly go to Robert Karjar, Karjarin. Uh, again, I have not I have asked this question to the other panelists, but I haven't asked this question to you. Now, Mr. Silla has also said that this bill, apart from apart from the core issue, he has made this statement. Uh, which uh, he has uh, uh, taken recourse to a press statement by the AIDS Control Society. He said that this bill will prevent spread of HIV AIDS in Meghalaya. What does this mean, actually? Mr. Robert Karjarin. No, uh, no the, uh, must have seen. I, uh, first of all, I, I, uh, first of all, I, I'm not here to answer on behalf of anybody. I'm here to Obviously, answer yes. on behalf of our own organization, as yes. see. And maybe, uh, yes, of course, I've seen his comment in the press and media. But uh, that is purely his personal comment. And I don't think so that I have uh, any right to justify somebody okay. else's uh, comment. So no. I think uh, CM of KGC will be the best person Absolutely. to justify what he is no, he has uh, already. He has already, we had asked him these questions. He had clarified his point of view. Now, what do you expect from the state government, Mr. Robert Karjurin? Uh, what do you think, Mr. Conrad Sangma, how do you think he should respond to this bill? Uh, uh, yeah. You see here, like, uh, with regard to uh, legislating any law with relating to language and culture, yeah. it is purely a, 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 the domain of the district council. The domain of the district council. Yes. So uh, the state government, state government, what we expect from the organization is that the organization is that the government, that the government must the governor must extend this bill. Because the uh, state government should not try to interfere into the subject matter of the district council. Once upon a time, uh, the state government has already interfered okay. in subject like the traditional political okay. institution and other, and we have seen that uh, many people in the district did not welcome that. So I will we expect that uh, that the state government should not interfere into the subject. Right. And, uh, and since he is also from NPP and uh, CEM also from NPP, we hope that uh, I will, NPP I will, will I will, I will, I have to go for a break. I will bid, uh, I will ask a few questions to Mr. Shilla and bid him goodbye for for now. Uh, Mr. Shilla, more wider consultations. Many people are saying that this this is what you should do. Wider consultations, Mr. Shilla. This is wrong, completely wrong. Uh, the Khasi people as a community, they have discussed about this problem of mi mixed marriage right from 1925. 1925, the yeah. uh, church, Presbyterian church, have raised this uh, problem from 1925. Yeah. So, and all along, the people of the uh, Khasi people, they have been discussing about this problem of the mixed marriages. Okay. Uh, between Khasi and uh, non Khasi. Right. It is not an issue of yesterday. Absolutely. So those people who object to it, as they have got no ground on this because okay. this has been the talk of every house, of every uh, villages. I mean, in Shillong people, they have a different uh, thing, some of them. But if you go to every nook and corner of the Khasi and Giant Hills, they are against mixed marriages. Absolutely. They, are, no. they don't even allow outsider to stay in their villages. Any Khasi women who married a non-Khasi uh, non and non-tribal, they don't stay in their village anymore. 
So it is not uh, uh, as someone objected that we are doing his. It is a very old issue right. in the mind of our Kassim Now, people. Now, Mr. Shilla, a lot of people will say that, you know, this has a direct linkage to, uh, at the end of the day, the National Register of Citizens, in and Permit. It's a question of how to restrict uh, uh, non kasis or outsiders, quote unquote, uh, in, in, in Meghalaya. That can automatically have an impact on the issue that you are raising. So now we will we will not uh, uh, connect with another issue. Okay. So we are single-minded as of now. So we want to pass this bill on the 17th of this one. The consultative committee that has been formed. So they will have maybe a, a second meeting. And after that, they will submit to the executive committee and will pass it. And we will get the assent of the governor. So you are confident? We are doing it on the strength of Article 29, Paragraph 1. That any citizen Manda residing in article. the territory of India, having their own uh, uh, distinct uh, language, script, and culture, shall have the right to conserve the same. Right. Right, Mr. So Shilla, we are doing just how that. We want to confident are you people. of passing this Mixed bill? Mixed marriage will dilute the Kasi community. How confident are you of getting this bill passed, Mr. Shilla? As the sun rises from the east, that is the confidence. No one can stop this bill. We have the right to conserve the same as uh, uh, enshrined in the Constitution of India, that as I have stated, Article 29, Paragraph 1. Okay, now finally to Very you. Clear. Nobody can stop. Final question Those to you. Those people who are uh, objected to this bill, final, most of them, they are people final. who their husband are non-tribal, daughter of non-tribal. And some of them, those who have uh, the mother, the parent, they are Muslim. So when they have adopted a personal law of other society, they cease to be a Khasi, as Section 10 of the Act says. Had adopted a personal law of a society not compatible with the Khasi personal laws. Those people, especially those Khasi people who married a uh, um, um, Muslim man, they cease to be Khasi. Right. My final question to you, and I will let you go, Mr. Shilla. No apology to the people on your HIV AIDS remark. Why should I ask for apology when I did not say anything against them? I have clarified time of game that there is no discrimination about them. In my first uh, press release issued, I said uh, that uh, uh, only the as what has right. been said by the Max Meghalaya AIDS Control Society on 25th February 2012 that migrants, truckers, and factory workers they constitute a high risk. Yeah. Absolutely. I just follow their statement. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll have to let so these uh, people, Mr. Shilla the only... go at this stage. Thank you very much, Mr. H. S. Shilla, the CEM of the Kasi Hills Autonomous District Council, for being on notice tonight. On this note, I'll go for a short break, but don't go away. When I come back, I'll come back to this debate and go straight to Shillong and to get the views of my panelists there. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, Hasina Karbi, you know, uh, we have been talking about the role of the civil society in this. There has been no wider consultations. Many people are talking about wider consultations. Hasina, if you're there, Hasina, uh, I think Hasina Karbi is, uh, Hasina, if, if you can hear me. OK, this question. Question goes to Gitanjali. Uh, you know, the, the, the what can what can uh, the wider consultation do at this stage? Do you think uh, the the Autonomous District Council uh, now can fight this court in court if in case there is a legal recourse uh, to stop this by somebody at this stage? Or do you think the, it has to have the normal flow in the council and then go to the governor and so on and so forth? Um, uh, you see, the sixth schedule to the Indian Constitution gives uh, yeah. absolute rights to the District Council to make laws on a variety of subjects, 
including marriage, divorce, property and social customs. Now before a law comes into existence, there is no way that that can be challenged in a court of law. However, as I said, if it is passed by the Khasi Hills Autonomous District Council, sent for the governor's assent and when the governor assents to it, as and when it becomes if. an act, mm -hmm. if when it becomes an act, mm. it is only then that the question of legally challenging it in the court of law would arise. As okay. of now, since it is just a bill, there is no question of any judicial scrutiny over it. So, uh, Hasina, you have heard uh, Gitanjali goes talking. But now, 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 basically, you know, the ball lies in the court of the governor. The governor has to do a lot. Uh, governor has to examine the bill. Maybe the Khasi Hills Council is, uh, uh, as uh, Mr. Silla said, they're having a consultative committee. That means there is an attempt by the Khasi Hills Autonomous District Council to you know have a broader consultation why is this consultative committee then uh, put into existence put up in place when he talk about consultative uh, you know getting everybody together i mean taking all the stakeholders together i think what i would mean to say here is that the most important part he is getting his group of people from KHADC to give their viewpoint or his group or his so consultation also mean that clans consultation also mean that we get people from the Senkasi to come together if that is not being done I don't think this no. bill will stand a chance that the governor will you know will actually take it into uh, you know ahead to yeah. pass the bill but my my question to you Hasina how do you know how should why should we assume that Mr. Shilla or the Khasi Hills Autonomous Council is not going to involve all these people that you are talking about? I don't think uh, the Senkhasi or the clan has been called upon to discuss on this bill. Mm -hmm. And I think what Bajon has also mentioned that a lot of clan has put up their viewpoint, I think for the next six months, they would really like to look into it. If he said that he's brought everybody together, then I don't think there would be opposition at all in the first place. Uh, Robert Karjari... I think what Mr. Shalla just mentioned just a while ago, he said that... He... Yes, go on, go that on. He is very sure that 17 of this month that you know all his group will come together. But what about the other stakeholder? They have not been consulted at all. Okay, we'll, we'll have to wait and watch. Uh, it's only two to three days left. Uh, Robert Karjarin, what do you have to say about the general complaint that there should be wider consultations and indicated by Mr. Shilla that he's going to do something like that? Mr. Robert Karjarin. Uh, with regard to uh, public consultation, I think you, uh, you as a uh, senior, sir, Journalists, you already know that uh, there is nothing in any uh, in uh, in any part of the Indian concern that any bill from either uh, the, the, the Parliament bill or the state legislative uh, bill or the council bill that it has to go mandatory to the people. Yeah. But of course, I I do agree with with you that uh, had had the KHDC at that point of time through this uh, subject matter to the public as whole, we may have a lot of uh, positive suggestion with regard to, uh, to this bill. Yeah. But uh, lately we've seen that uh, the KHDC had consultative, uh, uh, con uh, has constituted a, a consultative committee and I hope that this con uh, this, uh, con uh, this, uh, this committee constituted by the KHDC will do the necessary of uh, asking public views and opinion. But nevertheless, the action done by the CEM has uh, it has become uh, something good which make the people debate and people now uh, debate what is right and wrong in, uh, in, uh, in this bill and uh, I think it's never too late to, uh, to make correction in the bill. But as I say that uh, even though if we have to make correction, the spirit of the bill, the spirit of the bill has to be retained and uh, we also from the organization would like to remind the KHDC once again that uh, even though even though public consultation has to be done with regard to, uh, with regard to further strengthen the, the bill and the act as a whole, but uh, the, the spirit that, uh, that uh, the, the, the spirit to protect the indigenous yeah. 
this uh, people the Kasi community of denying the right and privilege and uh, of the Kasi women who married a, a non Kasi must be rethink. No, no, no. Be Robert, uh, what Robert Kharjering is basically saying that okay, it's there is it's not late. There can be debate on the bill, but the spirit of the bill has to be retained. Now, I mean, do you think at the end of the day, it is all this fear? We have this NRC going on in Assam, the fear that you know illegal migrants are going to overwhelm uh, the indigenous population. Do you think this is an extension of that kind of a fear at the end of the day uh, that has must have triggered the Khasi Hills of Most District Council? Uh, an outsider is a very loose term in the northeastern region. You know it well. Outside. That means people who are not native to that particular place. region or particular place. Uh, so, do you think somewhere this fear is lurking that you know the outsider element through marriage uh, may at the end of the day overwhelm and dilute a particular uh, uh, you know tribal society? Is it that actually? Well, uh, Azvi, that's a very relevant question, and I, and I think it's a fact. You see, uh, there is always a latent fear, a fear of being overwhelmed by numbers. And our Khasi population, to the, to the to my knowledge, is it's it's limited. It's about four and four lakhs to five lakhs, if you look at it numerically. Then also there is, uh, in this whole world is full of migration now. There is no place which is static. It yeah. is, it's so yeah. dynamic. You look at Europe, you look at Syria, you look at India, you look at Bangladesh, Myanmar, Rohingyas, whatever. And I definitely, whenever the uh, society or the culture concerned is basically very concerned about its own cultural identity, and there is a lurking fear. It happens, I would, I would say, with most uh, um, uh, cultures, uh, especially our tribal cultures, which are numerically, numerically in a smaller scale. And well, if that is the uh, that is that was your question, I would directly right. say there is a lurking fear. There is a lurking fear. Lurking John Carsing, <laughs> is it this lurking fear? Is there a fear that outsiders are going to overwhelm? Uh, this question will go to Hasina as well. But first, John Carsing, the lurking fear of quote unquote outsiders overwhelming the local population by way of marriage and other means. John. Is this xenophobia? Uh, Masvir, I would like to uh, just also correct uh, one of our panelists who gave a number. Uh, today, the Khasi people, based on my inputs and our collection, uh, we are today over 12 lakhs. 12 lakhs. Okay. People. I stand corrected. Uh, this stand is corrected. based on 1998 uh, figures, 12 lakhs. Okay, accepted. Now, when when yeah. uh, when one of the panelists <coughs> mentioned, uh, where you rightly raised the issue of the co you know the fear the fear concept here. I think one has to go back, as far as the Khasis are concerned, one has to go back to the Constituent Assembly. If you permit me, I'll just read one line from one of the uh, the uh, the go ahead, go ahead. memoirs of uh, late Reverend Nichols Roy. who was also a member of the Constituent Assembly and was also an Honorable Minister under uh, late Gopinath Bodoloi. This is what he said, as a hillman alone in the Constituent Assembly against the opposition of my Assamese brethren and with the change attitude of my colleague in the Constituent Assembly, the Premier of Assam, due to the pressure of the Assamese colleagues in the Constituent Assembly, had to alter the provisions of the draft six schedule, <coughs> which were based on the recommendation of the subcommittee of the Constituent Assembly. I was taken aback and greatly disappointed. What could I do at that time? My Khasi people, generally speaking, did not want even the sick schedule. They did not want to be in the mixed administration of Assam. The people who supported me on account of my personality also did not feel satisfied with the provisions in the sick schedule. So this is the genesis of the whole issue and you should know that, uh, you know, the, uh, on the opening of the district council on 27 June 1952, the students and others raised black flags and the police had to use tear gas to prevent any untoward happening. Some persons were arrested right. and cases were started against some of them. So this is how 
six schedule is so, gone so you have uh, yeah, with a legacy a, of uh, uncertainty absolutely absolutely so you 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 have you and see a lot all of all this non resolution by the government of india and mha <coughs> for so many years is uh, you know is erupting in various right. forms okay you've had various law and order issues in meghalaya right right and right these are uh, the offsprings of uh, that go, you know, got it, john i got a sense of those i've got your sense issues. i've got your i've got your sense uh, you uh, you you do not deny that this fear psychosis is there in the back of the mind and you have cited that it goes back in history hasina how do you respond to this is there a lurking fear uh, somewhere which is uh, behind this attempt to pass come up with a bill like this <clears throat> i think the chair has mentioned that uh, you know the village all supporting the bill he also said that when khasi women in villages are marrying non caste men they are not going to accept that woman the fear that there will be you know a kind of um, you know disruption over the culture by itself so i think that is one fear that he's he's brought in his statement that it's also evolving as what bar john has said i think it's got a lot to do with the six schedule itself that over the years because khasi people are a very small minority group and you have these two section that always is conflicting over many many years by saying that you know outsider are coming down to disrupt the whole community taking away all the resources six schedule was there to protect all these resources but i also want to bring the statement very very clear that when he mentioned one section of his his uh, his, his uh, main debate is that resources are being taken away when khasi women marry non khasi uh, men yeah but if you really look into the reality today economically there's also you know men khasi men who are providing that facilities of businesses under their name so why is it that he is pushing this entire situation to women he is not very very clear with what he's trying to say why why is he saying that it's only women who is actually going to give the space of exploitation to take place in terms of economic so that's also one fear that is always being brought again and again and i think the entire there's a lot of you know big kind of debate and conflicting debate at the moment yeah. but we also have to see that when we talk about economic it's just not the women it's also right. men who no. are there participating in got it got your to sense give this kind of support yes you know? so we also have to see that in that bill absolutely absolutely some very valid points that john car singh and hasina karbi has made there now gitanjali uh, you know i mean if you have heard mr shilla the cem he has said is extremely confident of having this bill passed and he said that article 29 can you explain a little bit uh, on what he is actually wh where is the confidence coming from um i think uh, bashila was referring to article 29 uh, paragraph 1 of the indian constitution which says that uh, minorities have the right to take care of their um, culture amongst other things right but my point is uh, in the name of protecting one fundamental right under the constitution of india you cannot really do something that is repugnant to the other fundamental rights under the constitution of india and yes protecting culture yes but in a matrilineal society throwing out those very women who basically are carrying forward the material structure of the society simply because they chose to marry out of the clan i don't think any any court in this country and i have great faith in the indian judiciary i don't think it would stand the test of constitutionality in any indian court absolutely we 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 should a situation arise we'll have to wait and watch but uh but basically you know i think this is an issue that needs to be resolved by the khasi society itself what do you think uh, drubo i mean like basically you know i mean court should be the last resort isn't it this has uh, these are issues which has to be resolved by the society by the civil society by the elected bodies by the community leaders and of course it should end uh, at raj bhavan we have to give a uh, proper counsel so that we don't have to fight it out of course that is the last resort the judiciary everyone has the right to fight it out what are your concluding remarks uh, drubha jorika i am running short of time uh was very finally it boils down to one's own society yeah. we are we are we are, a, we are an accumulation of various uh, that is what india is 
it's, 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 it's so many cultures, so many societies, uh, so many races, languages. So it, it, it actually devolves upon the Khasi society, a very mature society, if I may say so. And uh, mm, uh, <coughs> see, this, uh, this requires a lot of maturity, not just political maturity, but maturity, gender maturity, uh, uh, maturity about acknowledging the other's right. Yeah. Uh, this is very, very primarily important, which is what uh, Gitanjali said, the fundamental right for having your own choice. This is the essence of uh, modern civilization. The essence of what we call uh, true so humanity. You have made two points. One, it is uh, it's the choice should be left to the individual because it's a modern world yes. that we live in. Yes. And second, the Kasi, you have a lot of faith in the Kasi oh, society yes. Yes. to resolve this. Uh, uh, Mr. Robert Karjarin, at the end of the day, the governor has returned the bill, so there must have been some reason. And Mr. But Mr. Sila said he has withdrawn the bill. What 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 are your thoughts, Robert Karjarin? Very quickly. I. Uh as per the information I got, the governor did not return the bill to the KHDC. Okay, he just asked for 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 query from the uh, DCA, the District Council of FM yeah. uh, Department. And in the meantime, the KHDC recalled the bill. It's not that the governor has okay. rejected or returned it, okay. but the KHDC now itself recalled the bill on uh, on the ground that it <coughs> it uh, they want to. Uh, to, to rectify certain technical uh, defect in the in the bill because if you see the uh, there is a technical defect in the bill which the KJDC has uh, has committed and it it and it and it is necessary for rectify of the same so that's why the KJDC recall it by by itself it's not that the governor has uh, in the end has, uh, has so the bill. in the end Robert you think the bill is justified Robert. Robert Kajarin. As, uh, as I tell you, uh, Mr. Hussein, that uh, that uh, KHDC is, is on the process of consult is consulting with uh, with the with the Khasi people through the by by way of constituting the consultative committee. Yeah. What uh, that is the thing with regard to justification of the bill. I feel that uh, anything which is done for the interest of the Khasi community as a whole, and anything which is done for the protection of the right and interest of the Kasi community as a whole must be accepted by the by the community and with regard to uh, with, with regard to 100% uh, support i don't think so that anything could reach into 100% support even uh, so I, I don't think so that there will be any issue that any particular community must have, has to agree 100%. But uh, we have to see what best is what is the best interest for the minority uh, community like Hasi community. Then that has to be uh, done. Right. Uh, in the end, very well said, Robert Karger in there. Uh, you know, in the end. Everybody has to look at the interest of the minorities, a very small population of the Khasis, as John has said, 12 lakhs only, which is not a very high figure. Uh, Hasina Karbi, your concluding remarks, what are your last words on, on this issue, at, at least for now? For now, I don't think I support Bill at all as a woman. And I think uh, it's very important that it needs a wider discussion and it needs to bring in the element that we cannot change a cultural you know, culture which is existing for 100 years. I don't stand for accepting this bill at all. Wider consultation is what you are talking about. Wider consultation, there is still time for that, is it? Yes, wider consultation. The clans and the Senkhasi has to come together. They have to look at what is the processes and I don't think you can yeah. change a cultural practice through a bill. Absolutely. John, what are your parting words? John. Uh, I, would, uh, I would instead uh, request the Khasi Hills District Council. There are more urgent pressing issues, you know, there are more urgent pressing issues. Uh, because this can continue and we already have the original uh, act which is uh, which already has a mechanism to deal with this what the DC council would have to do is you know further codify other aspects of the of the of the clans but i would uh, 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 the DC council there are other yeah. pressing issues which are pretty more uh, you know more urgent and uh, very very uh, require uh, big discussions with the, at the state level on the government of india 
I would rather urge them, you know, a conglomeration of 15 or 14 uh, uh, NGOs have submitted a memorandum to the government of India for uh, for constitutional uh, amendments to the sixth schedule, okay. which is pending before the MHA. So these are pressing think, issues you know, that, is uh, that John Karsing is the talking about. Uh, Gitanjali, what are your concluding remarks? What course of action you see in the next uh, few uh, uh, days, weeks, months. Uh, how do you think this uh, issue panning out in the next few few days? Well, it is sad to see that uh, one of the primary features that is otherwise uh, seen in patrilineal societies is now becoming evident in a matrilineal society like Khazis. Trying to control women's sexuality has been one of the major tools that men have used for ages to try and retain their control over them. As I told you, the Khasis are not matriarchal in the sense that, yes, children take their mother's name, the property comes down from the mother to the daughter, but as far as power is concerned, that resides in the hands of the men. I think the female representation in the Autonomous District Councils and the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly talk volumes about it. But my parting remarks are that it is not just the constitutional right to equality here that is being challenged, it is also the right to equality as well as the right to marry somebody of your own choice that is enshrined in various international human rights instruments that India is a party to. Absolutely. And hence, I believe that if this bill goes forward and somehow manages to miraculously get the assent of the governor, this will definitely fall flat on its face in an Indian court, be it the Absol Meghalaya High Court or the Supreme Court of India. Absolutely. That's a very, very clear-cut statement by Gitanjali there. We'll have to wait and watch. Uh, as a channel, once again, I'd like to clarify, ladies and gentlemen, that we are neither supporting nor opposing the Kasi Lineal Bay. We are discussing this as an academic interest because this is a matter of very, very important public interest, not just in Meghalaya, but across the Northeast, if not the entire country, because this is something absolutely unique. Uh, but but at the end of the day, I must say that no one should have the power to deprive the Khasi women of their rights and more power to Khasi women. And as Gitanjali had said, yes, it may be a matrilineal society, but we yet to find uh, John will bear me out, Khasina will bear me out, that Khasi women are yet to find their proper place in positions of decision-making bodies. That is something which uh, we all hope uh, will change in the days ahead because it is also a modern society. We did not forget that. And this is the 21st century that we are living in. My parting words is that more power to Kasi women. On that note, I end this edition of Notice Tonight. I thank all my panelists for being here and participating in this very, very engaging discussions. On this note, once again, good night and goodbye.